Okay, I'll start the webinar. Uh, good evening, participants. Uh, the webinar is about to start, uh, so please uh, give us a few more minutes to uh, let more people to join. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, good uh, evening, everyone. Uh, we will start in about 30 seconds. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, good evening. Thank you very much for joining this webinar. Uh, we are going to start now. Uh, I'm uh, uh, Wang Shiman, uh, Head of Research of uh, China Galaxy International Securities. And uh, we are also very pleased to have uh, Darren Zhang with us from Macquarie Group. And uh, so for this webinar, we will divide it into two parts. First, uh, we will talk about the uh, Hong Kong market outlook first. And then Darren will also talk about some trading ideas for warrants. And then we will have a Q&A session. And before we start, uh, uh, we need to state our uh, disclaimer tonight. And uh, this webinar is purely for uh, educational purposes and should not be treated as uh, investment advice and at that point. And uh, we will try our best to present the information as accurate as possible. And, uh, but uh, we, we would like to uh, uh, remind that investors should not be uh, uh, purely rely on the information and we shall not be liable for any investment losses because of the inaccuracies uh, in the information. So we are going to start now.
Uh, so I will try to spend maybe about 20 minutes to talk about the Hong Kong market outlook first. And then uh, we will go to the uh, next part to Darren to talk about the uh, warrants. And uh, during the section, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to raise your question in, uh, through the Q&A function in your Zoom platform. And then uh, we will handle those questions during the Q&A session. Thank you for your attention. Okay, uh, let's start with the Hong Kong market outlook first. Uh, we will divide it into a few parts. And uh, first of all, we will look at what happened in 2020 first, because the Hong Kong market uh, actually underperformed, as you can see here, uh, actually down a bit uh, on a full year basis in terms of US dollar. Uh, and you can see uh, other major markets in the region, like uh, the Asia market, uh, the S&P uh, 500 and also in Japan also performed very well, but you can see in Hong Kong actually uh, down nearly 4%. And uh, one of the key reasons for the weakness is because of the US sanctions, especially before the uh, presidential elections. And therefore you can see the Hong Kong market underperform. But we believe this year the, the situation uh, should be better. In fact, if you just look at January this year, you see the uh, Hong Kong market pick up uh, uh, just slightly behind the uh, Asia market, but you can see actually better than the US and also better than Japan and, and Singapore uh, in January because there's uh, concerns related to the US sanctions they limit they limited after uh, the Biden administration. And uh, we, right now, we are also trying to see uh, uh, some favorable factors uh, this year, because last year, as we just explained, uh, the uh, uh, Hong Kong market underperformed versus the Asia market. But this year, given that the concerns about US sanctions diminished, we see some factors for the Hong Kong market to catch up. Uh, first of all, if you look at this chart uh, about the Asia premium, uh, Basically, when this index is high, that means Asia's uh, are more expensive. And uh, when the uh, index is low, that means relatively speaking, not that expensive. Uh, but you can see right now, even after uh, the, uh, uh, the index coming down a bit recently, but you can still see the Asia premium index right now is still higher than the five-year average quite a lot uh, because Right now, maybe still around 136, but the five-year average is 127. That means there's still some room for the uh, Hong Kong market, especially for X shares to catch up. And uh, if we see also fund flow, you can see right now is turning more favorable. Uh, for example, you can see the right-hand side. Uh, after the uh, concerns related to the US sanctions dimin diminish, you can see in January this year, the fund flow, just a single month, we are talking about more than 300 billion Hong Kong. You can see much stronger than any month in 2020. And uh, in fact, if you also look at uh, the uh, yearly chart on the right-hand side, you can see 2020 uh, also, also much stronger than before. Uh, that's why this is also another favorable factor. That means more... Uh, Mainland Chinese, because this southbound, that means uh, funds from South, uh, mainland Chinese investors. So you can see right now, uh, mainland Chinese investors, their interest in the Hong Kong market uh, is. And another thing is you can also see, uh, generally speaking, Hang Seng Index usually perform better when uh, renminbi is strong. Uh, the reason is quite straightforward because uh, for Hong Kong market, the share price is uh, based on Hong Kong dollar. So when RMB is strong, so automatically that makes the, the, the Hong Kong shares cheaper uh, because when RMB versus US dollar strengthen, it also means Hong Kong stocks become cheaper. And uh, that's why, as you can see in the last eight to 10 months, actually RMB uh, uh, has been appreciating. So that's also a favorable factor for the Hong Kong market. And so far this year, the consensus is still about uh, the US dollar may remain relatively weak. So uh, if this situation continues, it should also offer some support to the Hong Kong market uh, if renminbi is still relatively strong this year. 
And then we try to look at uh, some bigger picture uh, because uh, this year uh, in March, uh, the central government during the National People's Congress, they will discuss the 14 five-year plan for uh, this year until 2025. So that will affect some major directions of the policies. And uh, we highlighted a few key areas here, as you can see, like uh, the dual circulation, city cluster area, uh, technology innovation, renewable energy, and financial system reform. Uh, we will try to quickly go through some of these uh, areas. For the dual circulation, actually, they are referring to previously, you know, uh, the Chinese economy is quite export driven. But uh, in the last two years, you know, the trade war, uh, right now, the Chinese government is trying to reduce the reliance on export. And that's why the so-called dual circulation, one is the so-called external circulation referring to the export market. But right now, they are also talking more about the domestic circulation uh, for the local market uh, so that they can have a more balanced economic development. And uh, so therefore, uh, in, in the next few years, we believe uh, some of the uh, domestic uh, related uh, areas, for example, like uh, technology, uh, mid to high end consumption, and uh, also like uh, healthcare, these kind of areas, uh, probably we will see a better growth in the next few years because of this policy shift. And then another thing is about, uh, we mentioned about the city cluster, actually it's re 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 uh, related to the urbanization because uh, as we can see uh, the chart here, actually we are entering into the third phase of the urbanization. And uh, so during this uh, stage, the government will try to develop the areas around those uh, uh, metropolitan city so for example, around uh, the, so right now, I think you have heard in, in South China, we talk about the so-called Greater Bay Area, develop around Shenzhen, Hong Kong, and Guangzhou. And uh, for uh, so-called the, the uh, Yangtze River Delta, we are talking about developing the regions around Shanghai. And in North China, we also talk about the so-called integration of Beijing, Tianjin, and Hebei. Uh, which is talking about the development of North China. So for, for this part, uh, we still expect in the next few years, the urbanization will continue. And then uh, for technology, uh, we also expect uh, there will be uh, a lot of opportunities there because in particular, you know, uh, last year, the, the, the US sanctions, uh, for example, like technology embargo, uh, some of those targeting Huawei, and uh, therefore the Chinese government realized that they need to invest more in R&D, uh, especially related to technology. So uh, that's why we believe, uh, for example, as we heard it here, like digital tech, healthcare, these areas, we will see uh, more policy support. And actually also renewable energy will be one of the key areas we will see uh, policy support in, in the next few years. And, uh, and for the renewable energy part we just mentioned, uh, one of the key reasons why they need to develop uh, renewable energy is because as you can see uh, in the PowerPoint right now, China actually rely uh, quite a lot on uh, importing energy, in particular oil from uh, overseas. And uh, so the Chinese government want to reduce the reliance on energy imports so that it will improve the so-called national security. And therefore, uh, in, in coming years, we will expect to see, uh, for example, like wind, solar, uh, we'll see uh, policy support, especially for solar energy. Uh, we believe the development in the next few years will be quite optimistic because right now for uh, uh, solar energy in China already reached the so-called grid parity what is grid parity? That means uh, uh, for solar energy in, in many cases, no longer need the subsidies from the government. So that means the development of this segment will be healthier 
because they don't need to wait for the government subsidies. And that's why, uh, relatively speaking, uh, solar may have a better development than wind, uh, maybe in the next two to three years. And then um, coming back to the uh, Hong Kong market, uh, you can see here right now, we show you the uh, Rowan 4P or Hang Seng Index. Uh, actually, right now it should be cheaper after the correction in the last two to three days. But anyway, maybe still uh, near the high end of the range. Uh, but we would highlight that uh, actually the PE of 2020 actually may not be comparable with a few years ago because uh, some of you may know that in 2020, there was a reform in Hang Seng Index. And uh, after the reform, they included some uh, uh, high growth tech names in the index like Alibaba, Xiaomi, or our Meituan, something like that. And their PE definitely is higher than, than the, uh, uh, the, the Chinese banks. And therefore, uh, we are comparing Apple to Orange because in 2020, after the reform, we have more high tech companies in the index. So if you consider this factor into account, actually the, the Hang Seng Index right now may not be that expensive uh, and actually not near the so-called five year high in terms of forward P. And uh, so just summarize what kind of sectors we like, because we just mentioned about the uh, 14 five year plan. So, so from this perspective, if you look at it from a longer term, not just for a few months, uh, we believe you may look at uh, the new energy vehicle because government support the, the, the development of technology and uh, also consumption because we talk about the so-called dual circulation to have more focus of, of the domestic circulation. So uh, we believe like uh, Buri, uh, Baijiu, Dairy, uh, tourism, maybe but tourism maybe for second half until the, the COVID, COVID situation stabilized and also e-commerce, but uh, maybe more selective in the near term because of the political risk related to Alibaba. Uh, you may look at JD uh, or Tencent at the moment, relatively speaking. Uh, and then renewable energy, we mentioned solar, wind and gas, but solar may be better at the moment because of the grid parity. Also healthcare because of the elderly problem in China. And for urbanization, we believe you may also at China property management service companies uh, because when you continue to have uh, higher and higher urbanization rates, you also need better quality of property management service. So for this part, we also see uh, multi-year growth opportunities. And for near term, uh, we believe you may also look at some of the sectors like Chinese banks uh, because previously people have concerns about whether they need to share some of the benefits with the general public, especially last year because of COVID-19. But right now, this year, we see the economy, uh, the economy uh, has been picking up. So the pressure to share the benefit with the general public this year should be smaller. And, uh, and the rec recovery of the economy should also help improve the asset quality. And uh, the other area, maybe just for the next six months, uh, I will be the shipping. Uh, may also offer some opportunities. And finally, we believe investors may also look at Chinese telcos and uh, China property, given that the dividend yield after the correction right now is quite attractive. Some of them may give you 7% or 8% yield. So uh, that's the sectors we believe you may look at. And then um, we try to quickly go to some of the technical analysis. Uh, in fact, uh, right now we see some, because this chart is prepared uh, last week, uh, so may not show the correction in the last two days. But uh, so far, uh, the correction still haven't so-called destroyed the uptrend. So uh, unless we see a very sharp corrections in the next few days, otherwise if we see uh, stabilization, uh, in the near term, we still believe uh, we, we, we can see the uh, uh, Hang Seng Index going back to uh, 31,000 uh, in, in the near term. And then um, if we go to the next one, uh, for Alibaba, uh, we also see uh, right now actually is in a pattern showing that it may 
uh, go up or down, but we believe uh, uh, based on probability, we believe more likely to go up. Uh, and uh, in if they can really, uh, let's say maybe in the next few months, if Alibaba can uh, resolve the so-called anti-monopoly issue or some of the political issue, uh, we believe technically it, it can go to like 280 or more in terms of target price. Uh, but let's wait and see, because uh, I think they may still need some time to sort out the anti-monopoly issue or uh, the so-called uh, political issue. And then uh, for Tencent, uh, we also still uh, like the company and uh, also, actually, also we see some correction in the last few days, but actually we believe uh, it may offer some good entry points and we believe uh, from a medium term perspective, we may see more than 800 uh, uh, Hong Kong dollar for, for the share price. But uh, in, in, in the very short term, we may see some volatility. But uh, in the medium term, we still feel positive, not just because of technical reason, but also the fundamental reason, uh, for, for example, for those uh, services like WeChat, we still expect very strong growth. And for the uh, uh, so-called advertisement business, we also expect to see strong growth. And uh, I would like to highlight this because it is the Hang Seng Tech Index, which uh, was newly launched last year. Uh, which include a lot of high growth stocks uh, like Tencent, Alibaba, Meituan, Xiaomi, something like that. So it attracted the attention of investors because definitely in terms of growth outlook will be more exciting than Hang Seng Index because of the concentration in, in tech related stocks. And uh, you can see before the correction, right now the, the, the index actually reached the high end of the range. So I think the uh, correction in the last few days actually is good. That means it gives you a better entry point. Otherwise, if the index is touching the high end of the range, the risk may be higher. But right now, after the correction in the last few days, actually we believe the situation is better, which may offer some good entry point for uh, longer term investors. And finally, we try to quickly mention the uh, latest situation of the warrants market in Hong Kong. And uh, for this one, as you can see, uh, which kind of warrants right now may be more welcome or actively traded by investors in Hong Kong. You can see actually a lot of them are, are, are technology names like Tencent, Kwai Shou, Alibaba, Meituan. But uh, we also see some uh, new energy we need, uh, new energy vehicle related names like BYD. Uh, and, and Geely. Uh, so right now you can see actually the, the focus is focus on, focusing on this kind of hot sectors like EVs, uh, TMT, something like that. And uh, for CBBCs, uh, actually the, the situation you can see more or less the same. Uh, but we see some uh, uh, leading healthcare names, we see biologics. So basically right now, actually most of the uh, actively treated warrants are related to the high growth sectors. And uh, I think uh, because I, I know uh, Darren will have a very good PowerPoint to talk about the warrants, but before we uh, go into details, I would also like to give you some general idea if you have limited experience in warrants. Uh, I think you may need to, first of all, you need to, whether it is warrants or CBBB, uh, CBBCs, because the nature is different. Uh, because for example, for warrants, you may need to look at the so-called implied volatility to give you some idea whether it is expensive or not. Uh, but for CBBCs, uh, actually there is no such thing called uh, implied volatility. And uh, you may also need to look at uh, the gearing ratio of the warrants to, because some people may like higher gearing because they can take higher risk but some people, they may not want to take a high risk. They may prefer relatively lower gearing. I think these kind of things you may also need to look at before you really pick one warrants from those hot stocks, as I just mentioned, like Alibaba, Tencent, or BYD or something like that. 
but uh, you may need to look at some parameters first. So maybe I just end here first, and then uh, we have a special guest, Darren, uh, from Macquarie Group, and he will talk about uh, the uh, warrants and some of the trading ideas. So right now I will uh, uh, transfer the session to uh, Darren. Uh, before, uh, just mention, because some of the uh, uh, guests, if you join uh, a bit late, if you have any questions, just type the questions in the Q&A box and uh, we will handle your questions after the Q&A session, uh, after, after the presentation. Thank you. Hey, hi everyone, I hope everyone can hear me. And thank you Chiman for your very in-depth uh, explanation on an outlook on the market, especially coming from Hong Kong. I think uh, many of you can take his word, uh, especially on how things are actually looking like in the Hong Kong market. Okay, so let, just let me quickly get to the slides. Okay, sure, I hope everyone can see it. If anyone can't see it, uh, feel free to let me know. Yeah, okay, so, Anyway, uh, just to start, I'm Darren over here. I'm from Macquarie Warrens. And as a little disclaimer, uh, this um, presentation is solely for educational purposes uh, and it's recorded uh, also for training and educational purposes. Okay, so today uh, I'll be sharing, as what Shima has mentioned, uh, today I'll be sharing more about Warrens. Uh, in fact, it's one of the most powerful tools that you can get uh, in the market right now. Um, because first of all, what Warrens are, are able to do in Singapore is that it allows you to long, go long and short on the market, especially with how volatile market have been in the recent, in fact, not just weeks, in fact, recent months. Uh, so you can take a long, which is a bullish position or a bearish position. So for warrants, uh, if you are bullish, you can look at a call warrant. So you can see over here for call warrants, um, that's actually the chart on the left. You see how, why is, why do you buy it when you're bullish? Because the warrant prices move, move in line with the underlying stock or index price. Okay, whereas if you are bearish and you feel that market is going to come off, you can actually buy a put warrant. So you can see on the chart on the right, um, the orange line is when the prices actually come off, um, the put warrant price goes up. So this is the first feature as to why people like warrants. Sorry. Okay, so just to cover some other features as to why warrants have been increasingly popular in Singapore and even in Hong Kong as what Shiman has shared earlier. So first of all, uh, because warrants are very liquid, um, why do I say so? Okay, so what's liquidi uh, liquidity per se? So warrants, they are, what they're, uh, they're listed by a market maker and, <clears throat> excuse me, so they're listed on the SGX and uh, what market makers do is that it offers you liquidity, which is constant bid and ask price and volumes. So what investors are able to get is consist, uh, they are able to enter and exit the market easily. And second of all, as I mentioned, they're listed on the SGX, which is the exchange. You get live prices and transparency all at the same time. Second, Sorry, Darren. Yes? Can, um, what screen your slide? Sorry? Uh, your PowerPoint, you have the full screen. Is it full screen right now? Um, no. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. Can it, I just turn it off? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I can't see you. So. <laughs> okay, is this better? Yeah, but I can't see you. Is your video on? Hmm. Yeah, okay, yes, I can see you now. Okay. okay, so sorry about all the technical issues. <laughs> yeah, okay, so um, right, let's go back to uh, the third point, which is gearing. So gearing, uh, just nice, uh, earlier on, Chiman mentioned about something called gearing when it comes to warrants. So gearing, what is it? What is it? It's essentially, it multiplies, uh, gives you magnified returns for the price moves in the underlying. So let's take an example. Let's look at this table over here. So over in this table, we see an example of the 10 cent share versus the 10 cent call. So do you see the difference between the price increase? 
So in um, earlier this year, we see uh, in around three weeks, three weeks to a month, uh, Tencent share has actually rose by 36%. But in the same period, if you bought a Tencent call at, on 31st of December, all the way to the 25th of January, you see that your Tencent call has increased by 327%. So this is a, um, the result of effective clearing. So how do you get the number, number of nine times? Uh, what you do is actually just divide the gain in the Tencent call over the gains in the Tencent share and you get approximately nine times. And so one more thing that I want to take note, do you notice, uh, do you see the denomination of the um, shares over here, which is in Hong Kong dollars? Well, the Tencent call over here is in Sing dollars. And, and this is the reason why is because um, it's Tencent calls um, are created in Singapore. And that's why you are joining us in this webinar by CIMB today is because you can actually gain access to all these foreign underlines by trading warrants. And besides that, all, one more thing you notice is the price. Over here, the Tencent shares, they're priced at around five to 700 Hong Kong dollars. Whereas for the Tencent call, it's only around um, eight to 35 cents Sing dollars. So you see that you're actually paying a fraction of the price to get a bigger uh, to get the same, uh, to get an exposure over the foreign underlines. Okay, so now you've seen actually how warrants have performed and um, alongside the underlying moves. Let's actually look at some of the views that Shima has mentioned earlier and see how to actually project these views and get some estimated returns. Because today we are also very happy to share with you that their new tools are launched by Macquarie that allow investors to actually select the warren based on their investment investment profile <clears throat> and at the same time also get to see how will, will their warrants um, perform over time because uh, as mentioned uh, warrants um, they have um, a holding cost so what holding cost means is that um, as you buy a, uh, the warrant as, uh, for warrants what the holding cost is called a time decay so over time the price of uh, the value of the warrant actually decreases so one thing um, this tool this tool is called the warrant selector what it does is it is that it helps you project your gains or your returns over a period of time based on your holding period okay so i'll get to that later but for now let's just look quickly on uh how how does this um a very brief look about how this tool works so you can see if let's say the today's current price um the closing price is 240 uh and um earlier on i also spoke to Kiman on some target price um, which he gave me maybe uh, a target price of around 200, uh, 286 Hong Kong dollars. So let's say uh, as an investor and you feel that you want to hold this um, warrant for around um, two months, which is uh, approximately eight, week, eight, week, eight weeks, you see this is actually around a 18% price gain in the shares. So all you need to do is to key in your target price into this tool over here and also key in your holding period. And what will happen next is that you'll be able to see this will actually give you the right warrant uh, according to your investment profile and your holding period, which is the current call warrant R42W. And in eight weeks, you see that uh, you should see approximate returns of 82%. So another uh, example, which is also covered earlier on uh, a bullish view for a high growth stock, which is 10 cents. You see, um, same thing. If you have uh, the current price today is 687 Hong Kong dollars, and you feel the target price will go up 17% to 800 Hong Kong dollars, and let's say you hold it for eight weeks as well. Just key in the parameters over here, and what the tool will do is that it will give you the Warren PHDW and um, the expected returns you will see in eight weeks. So you see all these enlarged moves is also uh, like uh, what we covered is called effective gearing. So besides effective gearing, or, um, what you can do is besides letting an investor know how much um, magnified returns he or she will be subjected to, it also gives investors an idea about how much to invest. So let's take for example, if let's say there's a warrant A with an effective gearing of 10 times and costs around 10 cents. So an effective gearing of 10 times uh, is essentially, let's say a move in 1% in the share the warren will move 10%. So what you need to do is to take the um, investment in the shares, the kind of uh, exposure you want to get to the shares. Let's say you want to buy um, 50,000 worth of 10, 10 shares. You just need to divide that by the effective gearing of 10 times. And what it means is that you need to have a five, all you need to do is to spend a $5,000 investment in a 10 cent call. 
Okay. In other words, if let's say the warrant costs 10 cents, you divide it further and you just, uh, you, you be actually purchasing 50,000 units of 10 cent warrants in this example. So here, here's actually a few of the um, warrants that we have highlighted um, for the, in today's webinar, a few things that was pointed out earlier. So uh, you know, you'll notice this term called trending warrants um, quite frequently when you actually browse our website or any of our materials, marketing materials, uh, because all these are selected by our team uh, because the warrants are on a high bid and offer volumes, on tighter spreads, uh, they also have a high sensitivity and also a high gearing. But don't, don't worry, I'll get to that later about what it means, all these means. Okay, so now since we are already here, uh, I'll, I'll just quickly share our website and show you how to actually select all these warrants live and select them very quickly. <clears throat> yeah, so over here, there's our website, warrants.com.sg. And you'll find a lot of free tools over here that will actually allow you to make it easier to trade, not just warrants, but on the whole, because what it gives you is a market color. So first of all, on the top right-hand corner, you can see is the live index futures prices. So for this, uh, normally you actually have to pay quite a bit of money to get the live index futures. Because one thing you might need to know is that for maybe the Hang Seng, the Hang Seng Tech Index, the, S, um, the S&P, and the, uh, the Nikkei as well, all these indices, they track the future, uh, warrants track the futures prices. And over here, we give you the live futures prices. And next up, uh, there's also another new tool that we just introduced this year. It's called the Top Movers. So this is something uh, that is very useful for many of our investors because what it does is that investors just need to come to a website and the first thing they see is that, uh, is what are the current moving stocks in Singapore, Hong Kong, and also global indices. So we can see today, uh, in Singapore, AEM holdings after a, a huge rally actually has been also seeing a correction, as well as the high growth stocks that Shima mentioned. What we have seen today after uh, there was a report that uh, Hong Kong may increase the uh, stamp duties for stock trading. So you see the Hang, the Hang Seng Tech has fallen 4%, May Tuan, BYD, Geely, Sunny has all fallen, uh, uh, all fallen today. So how do you see this trending warrants? So simply, let's say if you're keen in Hang Seng Tech warrants, just click on Hang Seng Tech and you'll see the call warrants, the trending call warrants over it for the day. Okay, so over here, there's IQT, uh, or you notice this four digit warrant codes. These are the codes that indicate that these are the trending warrants. And you just need to key these four digits into your local stock trading account and you trade it just like how you trade a, single, uh, a share on, on maybe, maybe poems. IOCBC, um, I trade by TIMB or other trading uh, other trading brokerages. So after you uh, this is uh, one way you can actually select the trending trending warrant. But in the case where you want to see all the warrants and choose one that is more suitable for you, we have something that we saw earlier, which is called the warrant selector. So look, go back up to Hang Seng Tech, click on the warrant selector, and you will get directed to the tool. So let's say you can see over all the, the range of warrants we have, may be the indices, um, Singapore stocks, the Hong Kong stocks like Xiaomi, Tencent, Alibaba, Meituan, they are all over here. So let's say, let's just pick this first one, which is the Hang Seng Index. So the Hang Seng Index, you can see that there's a lot of warrants and they are all sorted by the expiry date. So let's say you have a holding period of around eight weeks. So what you see, you, you notice that for those warrants that uh, can't be helped to eight weeks, you, you actually show that it has expired. So what it means is that if you want to trade the warrants with a holding period of eight weeks, you should look for those that expires uh, uh, after that. Okay, and you can see all their projected returns from this example. Okay, so let's look at another example maybe for Alibaba. So Alibaba today fell by quite a fair bit also. So but because in our view, we are bullish. And I think earlier on we mentioned that the target price was 286. So from here, today's, uh, you just need to keep a target price of 286. Yeah, and you see, this is your, it means that the share will go up by 17.8%. And your projected return, if you hold it for four weeks, is 122%. But if you feel uh, it will take longer to hit 17 uh, to 18%, you just need to adjust it by clicking up or down. 
and see eight weeks and you see your return over eight weeks. And if you're bearish, you actually feel that the correction will continue over the next few days. So all you do is go over here to the target price, either key in a lower target price, or you can just press the arrow over here. So you see you alternate your returns. Then you can adjust by the plus or minus. And you thought you can see the right put warrant for you. Okay, so this is just a, a little example of how uh, the new tools work. But because due to the time constraint today, I'm unable to actually share with you and deep dive deeper into how all these warrants work. But I'll just want, like to share with you a few promotions for you to take note of, which is uh, like Shimai mentioned, um, there is a very new index called the Hansi Tech Warren uh, Tech Index. And now we are very proud to actually share with you that we have also launched Hang Seng Tech Index Warrant. And you can find out more by join, uh, coming to our websites. And you'll see um, there are actually, besides today's webinar, there's another webinar happening next week, which is the in-depth webinar that, I'm going to talk, that I've talked about. And we'll actually share the key, three key tools on in warrant trading and why you should use them to actually trade effectively. Okay. So we have covered all these. Okay, so some things to take note is that warrants, definitely they do come with risks, uh, such as gearing, because not everyone can take, uh, everyone wants a 20% gain, but not everyone can take a 20% loss. So this is something that investors, you all should have to take note. And also warrants have holding costs, just like all kinds of listed leverage products, they all have holding costs. But for warrants, they're called time decay, and all these can be managed with using the free tools available on our website. Okay, so over here, uh, for those of you, um, you can actually uh, check out the recording, or we actually try to send um, the slides, and you can scan the QR code to check out the Hang Seng Tech warrant on the SGX. Um, and also, what's the index? How to trade them? What are the trending Hang Seng Tech uh, warrants? So this is uh, an area for you to actually pick up uh, a new area, which comprises of many high growth stocks. So here is the webinar that I've mentioned earlier. So do sign up on our website. The link is over here. Uh, reason because uh, first of all, most, more, most importantly is that you get to learn how to actually trade warrants uh, effectively and we actually teach you how to select them live. And besides that, we also have little prizes for people to win um, in the webinar as well. And for those of you who actually want to try without uh, trading warrants without um, spending money, just want to learn how it works, uh, there's actually a um, campaign or a contest over here organized by SGX. It's a simulation. So you, all you need to do is actually just uh, subscribe, register over here, and you, um, you actually compete against other investors uh, trading all kinds of products on the SGX, maybe warrants, um, stocks, and of course, the um, top, um, top the person in top returns would win uh, a prize. But more importantly is you get to uh, learn using the simulation on warrants and other products. Okay, so uh, just to wrap up, um, do follow us on Facebook, uh, Telegram, or on YouTube, uh, because we all have all these sort of latest news to actually let investors know what's going on in the market. Like today, I thought I'd like to highlight this, uh, is where the stock trading duty hikes uh, it triggered a sell-off and we actually post it once we got the news. Uh, today, we also released a market view uh, by one of our uh, SGX stock trainers. We worked together with him to offer insights on the, on the market. So do follow us. And yeah, I will just wrap up my uh, part over here and we can move to the Q&A. So thank you all. Okay, thank you, Darren. Right now we are uh, entering into the Q&A session and just a reminder, uh, you've you have any questions, you are welcome to use the uh, Q&A function uh, on the Zoom platform to input your question and then we will handle your questions accordingly. And uh, maybe we just uh, start with a question related to Warren first, uh, because uh, there, uh, uh, an investor asked, uh, he understand that uh, Warrens have a uh, lot of benefits but uh, are there any drawbacks compared with shares uh, and they need to pay attention? Sorry. Yeah, okay, so thank you for the question. Uh, by, uh, yeah, okay, so warrants have a lot of benefits and what are the drawbacks? So as I mentioned earlier, warrants do have risks. Uh, first of all, being that gearing, because gearing, uh, warrants have a gearing of around three times all the way to 20 times. So as we covered gearing, 
what it does is that it magnifies your, magnifies your returns. So everyone would be happy with a positive return, uh, but can everyone handle a negative return? So like I mentioned, um, for a 20% gearing warrant, if a share moves by 20%, the warrant uh, will also move by 20%, but it can also be on a downside risk. So investors have to understand uh, what's their risk profile and the level of gearing that they're comfortable of undertaking. Second of all, uh, one point about warrants is that of the holding costs. Because every listed leverage product have some sort of holding cost. Um, for warrants wise, the holding cost is called time decay. So um, the longer you hold, uh, because it's over a period, it's on the aspect of time. So the longer you hold a warrant, what it means is that the value of your warrant will drop because you are paying a premium to actually hold a warrant. So this is something that uh, it can be uh, mitigated and also managed properly by using our warrant tools. But as I mentioned earlier, if you notice just now uh, when you saw the warrant, uh, warrant selector, uh, after holding for eight weeks, you, people, uh, some of the warrants are also still seeing um, huge gains. The reason is because the moves in the underlying is able to offset the holding costs. And that's why using the tools available, you can actually calculate how much um, your warrants will actually be, um, the estimated returns of your warrants at the end of your holding period. Yeah, I think these are the main uh, things that uh, investors should be take, uh, take note of. And for like the other um, features about warrants and aspects of the, about warrants, uh, we can actually, we'll actually discuss further during our, um, our in-depth webinar, because that is the place where I can really go into each and every um, detail about what makes up a warrant and the uh, calculation of it. Okay, thank you, Darren. And then, uh... We have an investor ask about the US sanctions, about the delisting uh, for the uh, mainland companies and whether it will hit those uh, tech companies. Uh, in fact, uh, right now for the so-called delisting in the US, I understand that there are three year of uh, grace period. And, uh, and that's also why uh, the Biden administration, right now there, there is no urgent need for them to review the, the uh, policy introduced by Donald Trump because there is a three year grace period. So I would say right now it's still too early to tell uh, whether those uh, uh, Chinese ADRs, whether they really need to be delisted or not. Because uh, maybe let, let's say uh, after 12 months or 18 months when the Biden administration stabilized the domestic uh, economy, especially stabilize the COVID situation, uh, then they will have more time to review whether they really want to ask the Chinese company to delist or not. So I will say right now, probably the impact may not be that significant at the moment because I think people will wait and see uh, after Biden stabilized the domestic economy, whether he will review this policy or not. And then we uh, go to the uh, next question related to uh, actually, it should be for Darren. Uh, actually, it's, uh, I think maybe for some new investors, they, 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 they also want to know how to select warrants and uh, any easy way to, to pick some of the warrants. Okay, so I think the tool uh, we used just now, the warrant selector, I think that is one of our ways that we help investors uh, find out what, um, what is the right warrant for them. But for a Bigger shortcut, uh, as in the sh shortest cut, I would say, which is to use um, the top movers um, in our, on our homepage. Because after selecting the, the warrant, uh, I mean the underlying that you're interested in, what will happen, you'll see the two top trading warrants available. And that's one quick way. But other than that, using the selector tool is the best way because you get to see all the warrants over the underlying. Uh, besides that, you also get to see them listed according to the listed according to the expiry date. And if, it's, uh, if your holding period is longer than expiry date, um, the selected tool will prompt you that this warrant will not have any value because it will have expired already. So this is one of the two. And I think I can, I, I'll, I'll answer another question um, because it's quite similar. Okay, so can buyers of warrants terminate before the matur um, maturation of warrants if the trend reverses? Uh, you can definitely do that. Okay, so the uh, one thing about warrants is that uh, you do not have to hold it to expiry. Uh, you can act, 
because the point of the market maker is allow you to uh, buy a warrant from the market maker. But at the same time, you could, if you want to sell the warrant, you can send it back to the war, uh, market maker at any time. And that's why we always say structured warrants, they are designed for short term, to capture short term moves in the market. So you buy when you feel that there's going to be a rebound or a correction, and you should sell it when you hit your, once you hit your target price. Okay, thank you, Darren. Uh, then uh, we go to uh, another question uh, related to the 14 five-year plan in China. And um, because one of the focus is about technology and uh, the investor asked whether the situation of the US tech stocks will have impact on uh, Hong Kong tech stocks. I will say it depends on which sectors you are referring to. For example, if you're talking about new energy vehicle, then definitely yes, because uh, you can see when uh, Tesla perform well in the US, those uh, electrical ve uh, electric ve uh, vehicle names in Hong Kong and Asia market usually also perform well. Uh, I think the reason is Tesla is the uh, uh, market leader, not just in the US, but in the world. And that's why the, the share price performance of Tesla affect the, the sentiment of the whole sector. Uh, but for some other sectors, for example, like uh, renewable energy, actually China itself is the leading player. So uh, the, the US stocks actually should not have much impact on, on, on those Chinese renewable names because the, the Chinese company themselves uh, are, 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 are the leading players. So I would say it depends on which sectors you are referring to. For, for EV, I agree, is yes, but for uh, uh, renewable, probably not. And, uh, and for TMT, I mean for internet, partially, uh, for example, if you talk about Google or, or something like that, whether their share price will affect Tencent or Alibaba, I will say it may affect the sentiment, but probably not a big impact given that their business model or target markets are quite different. So uh, that's why I, I, I uh, coming back to, to your question is case by case. And then uh, if we go to the next question is about, uh, uh, there's a question from an investor asking about the warrant is, what's the longest day uh, of expiry of a warrant? Two years, one year or, or how long? Okay, so for warrants, uh, it's quite interesting because uh, they're not like options because uh, warrants are really shorter term trading instruments. And that's why you notice um, for maybe for index warrants, index warrants, they're expiring. Usually you notice that they're, it's quite, um, quite short and maybe investors typically like to look into uh, an index warrant that expiring between one to two months. Okay, and they probably hold it for one to two month expiry warrant. Uh, investors usually hold it for around one to two weeks. Uh, whereas for stock warrants, it's a bit longer. So for stock warrants, you might actually find um, an expiry of up to a warrant that's expiring in eight months time. And investors might hold it for a month. Yeah. And that's the diff key difference between uh, another question you see between options and warrants uh, is that um, one thing is that warrants and, and Warrants and options, even though they are, uh, they are rather similar and they are structured with similar terms, is that options are traded and on a stock exchange or over the counter. But for structured warrants, they are exclusively traded on an exchange. And that for structured warrants, you notice that um, because there's a market maker, there's always liquidity for people to buy and sell prices. Whereas for options, because you're trading against another investor. So I think that's a key um, key difference between both. And that for warrants, you actually treat them just like how you treat shares. So you can treat them just like how you trade um, on your um, local brokerages. It's sort of answered that question. And just uh, another question, which is um, for the tool that um, I showed just now the warrant selector, um, how do people hatch against unforeseen situations like the holding period? Okay, so for all these tools, um, all the estimated calculations, all these have already priced in the holding cost. So we are not just showing you how much the warrant will gain over time. Um, gain. We actually will show you how much you will gain after deducting the holding cost. 
So people, like I mentioned, by using the tools, you can actually use to manage all these holding uh, risks, um, maybe from holding costs or um, price moves. Okay, uh, thank you, Darren. Then we go to the next question. Uh, probably, I think uh, other uh, investors may also want to ask is uh, because uh, right now the tax stocks perform very well, but at the same time, uh, there, there is concern about the US bond yield, uh, which is going up. And I agree right now, uh, definitely investors are looking closely at the bond yield, especially the 10 year US treasury. Uh, especially after the rally in the past two to three years, uh, in terms of absolute valuation compared with a few years ago, we can't say the tech stocks are cheap. Uh, but I think um, after the speech from the Fed chairman last night, at least uh, it shows that the Fed uh, right now is still willing to, uh, to be more accommodative in terms of monetary policy. So that means... Uh, uh, the, the Fed will try their best to avoid a sharp increase in the uh, uh, U.S. Treasury bond yield. So uh, I think in the near term, people will look at the operations, the, the, the so-called open market operation of the Fed to see whether they are really doing that or just giving, giving some lip service. Uh, if people find that the, the uh, bond yield actually is stabilizing, then I think uh, the concerns will, will be relieved. Uh, but if that's not the case, then definitely we will see more market, market volatility. But we may need some time to, to look at the situation to see whether the Fed is really uh, trying their best to make sure the, the, the bond yield will not go up sharply uh, in the near term. So uh, we go to the next question. Uh, Darren, there is an uh, investor asking that for, uh, for the Macquarie Warren website, uh, does it provide any breaking news or investment moving news during trading days? Okay, uh, sure. Uh, we, do, we don't have it on our website, but we have it um, even on a platform which is called Telegram. So that's even easier because Telegram is like um, WhatsApp or WeChat. So we'll send it live to you. Uh, and I'll actually share, share the link over here so you can actually add it on your Telegram. You can, or you can find us at warrens.com. Uh, as in Macquarie Warren Singapore. Okay, so that's one question um, um, by M. Okay, so what would you suggest a good mix of portfolio because you're a long-term investor and you only buy shares? So which of the mentioned warrants should you buy uh, given that you're not much of a risk taker? Okay, so for this, um, we, can't, we can't give any uh, advice on what's a good mix of portfolio. Uh, but one thing like I mentioned earlier that warrants come with a gearing. So if you mention that you're not much of a risk taker, um, you will look for a warrant with a lower gearing. So maybe three to five times. Okay, and also one thing, uh, if you only buy shares, uh, one important thing to note is that because shares, you can buy and hold them for a long period of time. But for warrants, you have uh, this thing called the holding cost, which is time decay. So the longer you hold, you actually have to pay a, time, a premium over that. So if you plan to buy warrants, always do take note, um, don't, um, they don't hold it for too long, uh, unless you have a really projected a specific holding period, and you have also fact, uh, used our tools to estimate your returns. Okay, thank you. I'll hand it back to you, Shimon. Oh, thank you. Uh, because right now we are at uh, 8 p.m., so we, we are trying to answer the last question. Uh, I think uh, this is also maybe a hot topic among investors is about the uh, tension between US and China. Uh, is it easing? Uh, after the uh, Biden administration and uh, what's the view from China? Uh, I will say uh, right now, probably we can only say it is stabilizing. Uh, if we talking about the US-China uh, or China-US relationship, uh, because definitely right now, at least I think for the first six months for 
uh, the Biden administration, I think the most important thing right now definitely is not the relationship with China, but how to stabilize the situation of COVID-19. Yeah, so that's why uh, we can see uh, in the last one or two months, actually we haven't seen uh, some so-called major actions from the US, which is related to the China relationship, given that definitely the most important thing right now is uh, uh, how to stabilize the COVID-19 situation in the US. And I think for China, the situation is so similar because they also understand that uh, Biden right now actually will not focus too much on, on, on the relationship with China, given that they also understand the, the first priority of uh, President Biden is, is to stabilize the COVID-19 situation. So I will say whether we really see some improvement or uh, more tension, probably we may need to wait at least six months or a bit more when the COVID-19 situation stabilizes so that uh, President Biden can spend more time on other issues. Otherwise, uh, in, in the next few months, I don't expect to see some major changes for the uh, China-US relationship. So uh, because of the uh, time constraint, uh, unfortunately, we need to end here today. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your participation. And then uh, you have any, uh, if you have any further questions, you are also welcome to contact our colleagues. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, goodbye. Thank you, Shiman and everyone. I hope everyone had uh, your dinner and maybe a bit late, but a happy new year to everyone. Thank you. Thank you.